Coliseum, the site for the ACC tournament and a semifinal matchup between North Carolina and Virginia. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. Great to have you with us in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Tar Heels had to struggle to win an opening round match with Clemson yesterday. Dick, they did not play with very much emotion in that one. Well, the key in basketball is you have to play with intensity and emotion. If you don't, you can be in trouble, especially when you play against somebody that's talented. And today, Virginia has some talent. North Carolina needs an excellent performance today out of King Rice on the perimeter because of John Crotty. And also, Virginia's very physical defense. Defensively, but Virginia lost twice to North Carolina. So North Carolina psychologically has to believe they can win. And when you talk North Carolina, remember the two seniors, Chilcott and Fox. Virginia seemed to get out of its slump yesterday. They beat Wake Forest in the opening round, and they are back to the same starting lineup that brought the most of their success this year. Well, Mike, they have Anthony Oliver now back in the starting lineup because earlier this year he broke his hand, his right hand, his shooting hand. And if there's one dilemma for Virginia, it's shooting the basketball. They shot fairly well yesterday, and they had positive results. Crotty and Brian Stitt. When you talk about one of the great players in the ACC, you talk about Brian Stitt, but I like the kid Turner. What an offensive rebound. Should be a heck of a game. North Carolina, Virginia trying to play Duke. Let's look at the lineups for both of these ball clubs. First for Virginia, Turner, who's an outstanding rebounder, and Stiff up front. Jeffries in the middle, Oliver and Crotty, the point guard. For North Carolina, Lynch and Fox are the forwards. Chilcutt starts in center. Rice and Hubert Davis are the guards for Dean Smith. Jeff Jones in the middle of the huddle, already the most successful rookie coach in the history of ACC basketball. 21 victories, 10 defeats. The youngest head coach in ACC history, for that matter, at age 30. And the master, Dean Smith, 711 wins, 208 losses in his brilliant career. He's been on that sideline longer than Jeff Jones has been living. <laughs> Good look at Jeff Jones. Played for Terry Holland in Virginia. Carolina wearing the home whites as the higher seed. The winner advances to meet Duke tomorrow in the ACC championship game. Hey, Mike, any truth? I heard a wild rumor that North Carolina's going to change the look of their uniforms next year. That's what I heard, too. You heard that, too? I'll have to wait I to see it. I can't to believe, believe it. it. That's like almost the Dallas Cowboys. You don't expect that to happen or the Yankee pinstripes. <laughs> Ball knocked out of bounds, touched by Oliver, so North Carolina will inbound. Both reshaping the Liberty Bell. Yeah, North Carolina with a lot of experience on the floor. A lot of people thought this year when they got those great recruits that many of these seniors would be sitting on the sideline and the seniors prevail. Well, Dean Smith's always going to get the edge to experience. Senior-oriented, always has been. King Rice running with love. This is Hubert Davis, Lynch. Guarded by Turner. Lynch and Turner, two great jumpers on the inside. Hubert Davis puts up the left hand, no good. Fox, offensive rebound with the left hand. And there's the rebound to Jeffries. Jeffries with that good rebound. North Carolina just looks a lot more alive right now than they did in that game against Clemson. Jeffries down the lane, nobody checked him, so the big guy shot and scored. He's got a nice little touch for a big fella, only a sophomore, second year player. Rice trying to get by Crotty, got it to Lynch, jump hook, missed everything. Fox, great position, he missed. Lynch follows, tied at two. George Lynch with the offensive rebound. Fox has great games here. In six games, he shot over 60% at the Charlotte Coliseum. Stiff trying to push it up and does. That's when Virginia is at its best, when it can run. Well, they push the ball up the court quickly right there, and Stiff on the inside. Very tough when he takes the ball to the basket. It's that half-court offensive situation that bothers Virginia. They don't shoot the ball that well. Fox with a runner down the lane. Nice look by Chilka, but an excellent draw, drive by Fox without the basketball and using the left hand. Right down the gut of the defense. Isaac Crotty, how many times have they gone at it? A little double team. He's got to reverse the ball. Reverse the ball. Got it to Stiff, and Stiff will take a 20-footer. Turner kept it alive. He's fouled by Lynch. That's what he does so well. Attack the offensive boards. He's averaging 15 points a game. Yesterday he was quiet in the first five minutes, and then all of a sudden he became a major factor. 
There's the jumper by Stith, who's had a little trouble shooting the perimeter shot. And there's Turner, keeping it alive. Once, twice, now he's gonna go back up and he can grab him on a hand. It's only 6-6. Six, six. Number 12, Kenny Turner and the line for the Cavaliers. Two shots. Senior out of Indianapolis, nearly an 80% free throw shooter. Wasn't heavily recruited out of high school. John Moreau now, nice guy, comes out, the official hands him a towel. He's a real nice guy. Wanted to help me with my jacket today before we did the opening. He came over and said, Dick, can I help you with your jacket? I said, that's okay, John. I can help myself. Turner misses the first try. And everybody walks over. How many times do you see that a guy misses? They walk over, give him a five. There's a look at Jeff Jones, played at Virginia. Taking over the rebounding leadership from Brian Stith. Cavaliers with a 5-4 lead. Rice trying to push the ball up the court quickly. Carolina likes to get into that passing game. Pass and go away. Pass and go away. Set some screens. Look to the box. Lynch couldn't keep the handle on it. Jeffers gives to Karate. Karate made some great drives yesterday. Loves to go to the basket if he sees an opening. So they're jumping out on him, trying to get into a trap right now. I think this club has a tough time rotating because they don't have good team speed, North Carolina. And they go in their traps. Oliver missed. This is Hubert Davis. He's been doing that well, Mike. Stroke in the J. Shoots the three. Last 10 games, he's shooting over 60% from the floor. He's been on a tear. Nobody shoots the three, though, like that guy from Kentucky, Patino's Bambinos. They're in the zone now. And the 2-3. Two-point lead for North Carolina. Right. Oliver is number 10. He's the guy they needed back in the lineup after the broken hand. Well, when they were that famous scramble defense, they liked to play against Clemson. They struggled. They went to the 2-3 zone, and it really created problems for, problems for uh, Clemson. Crotty trying to penetrate that zone. Nice bank shot for John Crotty. Nice little kiss off the glass. Never seen a collection of point guards like we've had the last couple of years in the ACC. It's been unbelievable. Well, you know, King Rice was so heralded out of high school. Once he committed to North Carolina, John Crotty started to look elsewhere because he was thinking Carolina. Chilcutt with a miss. The tip. Chilcutt got it. Chilcutt very active inside. His brother was an Operation Desert Storm. For the Persian Gulf. Jeffries comes way outside to help against the pressure. Now Crotty. to the ball exceptionally well right there and he broke down Lynch who lost sight of the basketball. Kenny Turner has really improved himself as a player. Alley-oop to Lynch, couldn't get it, got the follow. Chill cut. Fox. Are they alive today? This is not the same look that we saw yesterday. Sure isn't. Fox with that good offensive rebound. Lynch hurts himself and then he gets himself in poor angles to shoot the basketball. Stiff, long range. North Carolina has already had six offensive rebounds in the first four minutes of this game. And that means you're playing aggressive basketball. Yesterday they didn't have any early in the game. King Rice high off the glass. The foul underneath will be called on Chilka. Well, Dean's going to start the substitution pattern. Here we go. Didn't take long, and this is Brian Reese, who was suspended because of a curfew regulation. He'll be back when we come back. The Big 8 semifinal has gone into overtime. We'll show you how they got there. Less than 30 seconds left in the game. Missouri up by two with Melvin Booker on the line for the Tigers. We'll show you how it finished in regulation. Motion to uh, Reggie Smith that he wants a timeout if it if they get this free throw down. He had the game winner against Oklahoma State in overtime at Missouri. Misses here. Missouri's lead is two. It's 78-76. Missouri has to defend the three-point shot. You do not want to get beat. At least you'd want to go into overtime. Inside. Don't want to foul this guy. It goes it on. 78 all. Missouri with plenty of time. Still six seconds. Peeler to Coleman. Coleman to Doug Smith. Smith, no good. Oh, oh, time. 
They are now in the overtime. Three minutes to go. Oklahoma State with the two-point lead. They're the top seed. We will keep you updated right now. Back to Mike and Dick in the ACC. John, thank you very much. And Dean Smith has gone to his bench for the blue team. Five new players. He's got the young people on the floor. The Diaper Dandies, Phelps, Montross, Sullivan. Reese is out there and Henrik Rodel. Rozier as well. Rozier and Reese were suspended for missing curfew by a couple of minutes and did not play yesterday. I want to see Phelps look at the basket. I never see him look at the basket to shoot the ball. Ryan Reese with the jumper from the corner, not noted as a shooter, great athlete with tremendous leaping ability. He has his first two, and the lead has grown to four, 13-9. Played with Adrian Autry down at uh, Palatine High School. Autry now with Syracuse. Roddy for three. Roddy with a good look and good stroke right there. He's been a little inconsistent shooting the long range jumper. Really has. Reese down to Montross. Montross has got to slide inside. Montross and London going at each other, and Montross will be called for the offensive foul. Well, a little bit late with the call. I thought they could have had Montross a little bit earlier. Fox is back in, and so is Lynch. Eric, the seven-footer. Watch him now slide inside. He's going to slide inside, double zero. Oh, there's the foul right there. Now watch, they wait, and then they call it with the swim stroke. Could have called it earlier. I mean, he laid a body on London. Incredible. Blue team didn't last long, maybe about 30 seconds. I'm waiting to see this greatness projected for Derek Phelps. Everybody says he's going to be a great one. The guy with the rock right now, number 14, superb defender. Turner had his shot partially blocked by Montross. Lynch trying to save it in camp. See, I think when you don't get a lot of playing time, you come in as a heralded kid, you start to lose a lot of confidence, a lot of self-esteem. You got to face peer pressure. Your peers say, hey, what's the deal? You're sitting on a bench. And then watching all these other guys excel like Rodney Rogers, and then it becomes a difficult time to start performing. Jeffries comes back in. Turner will get a breather with 13.55 to go. I agree with you, Dick. You see uh, uh, nothing like playing time to develop skills. That's where you develop them, right on that floor. Very difficult to just do in a practice situation, but that's the luxury Dean Smith has, though, because of his experience at deep team. Karate missed the three this time. Montross with another rebound. You can tell Montross has developed during this season. Fox is hacked from behind by Oliver, who will pick up the foul. Well, see, next year, you wait your year. Next year, when North Carolina lines up, Jeff Jones knows they're going to line up with some new thoroughbreds across that front who are going to play 35 minutes, the Rogiers and the Montrosses. Rick Fox said yesterday we didn't play with a lot of intensity and emotion. We got the win. He said coach wasn't too happy at halftime. Henrik Rodel with a rare shot. He missed. He came in with a reputation as a great long-range shooter, Ala Kubek of Duke. Hasn't done much with it here. There's the jumper. Won't go for Stiff. Try to get the steal. Kicked out of bounds. Out to Virginia. The Cavaliers trying to pick up the intensity a little bit. You know, everybody's saying before the game, very difficult to beat a team three times. Well, I'd rather be in the shoes winning twice and knowing I'm going out there playing a club that I've beaten twice. Yeah, I'd much rather play a team that I've beaten twice than the other way around. Karate calling out the play. It's a one-point North Carolina lead as we approach the 13-minute mark. Nice defensive stance by Phelps. So he's switching on it, trying to allow the reverse pass. Jeffries. Karate from the baseline. A little more offensive-minded today. Well, he's getting a good look at the basket, not forcing any shots, and there's not a whole lot of pressure on him as he's shooting the ball. Karate, three out of four, seven points, and the Cavaliers have the lead. logging quite a few minutes to the point here. They try to slide Fox down to the post. Lynch to Montross. Great pass. Nice high-low entry. I remember when they had Brad Doherty. They ran that so well, that high-low play. Karate with Phelps on him into the lane. Nice dish to Blunden. He's fouled. At Blunden, the future QB for Virginia, replacing Sean Moore next year. George Welch says, wait a minute now. Don't get the job out now. I'm the coach. There's a little dump down. Blunden doesn't have a good angle right here. That's got to be tough duty at a school academically as tough as Virginia to be able to play two major sports. Unbelievable. 
got to start one game last year. Beautiful campus down there in Charlottesville. Not a bad one in Chapel Hill either. No. It's Cornell Parker, number 33. You just saw come in. And Brian Stith will get a rest with 12.21 on the clock. Parker, good-looking freshman. He had some starts there when Oliver got hurt. Gives him some defense. London, an iffy free-throw shooter at best. A much better passer than he is free-throw shooter. There's a different shape ball. North Carolina senior sitting on the pine, waiting for the call from the master, waiting for Michelangelo to wave the paintbrush and say, get on in, King and Peter. Look, London's a big quarterback, too, 6'7", 225. Yeah, he is big. I wonder, does he have any mobility? He's got some. He's got enough. We're tied at 15, 12, 19 to go first half. Phelps brings it back down. Rozier is into the game for North Carolina. Rozier, a lot of offensive ability. Five-second violation. Mistake by the young player. Body pressure in. If he's six feet within you, it's a five-second count. Four turnovers for North Carolina. Virginia has not turned the ball over until right there. First turnover of the game for the Cavaliers. Does a look at Crotty. Plays very physical on that perimeter. Plays very, very intense. As you talk about so often, Mike, so many great point guards, Corciani and Hurley and Anderson. A oh, nice execution the way to swing the ball. A little bit Good too anticipation late. by Turner. Now he's a little too late, hesitating to making that entry to Rogier. Rogier's got to step to the ball, too. He's waiting for the ball to come to him. For you young kids out there, you got to step and beat the basketball. Turner couldn't get it to go down, tried to follow tip, didn't get it. 13 to 4, North Carolina out rebounding Virginia, and Phelps threw it in with a left hand. A little acrobatic move by Derek Phelps. I don't know, maybe we give him four on that. I don't think he believed that went down. It's 17 15, Carolina by two. Right now, let's check in with John Saunders. John. All right, Mike Patrick, we'll get back to you momentarily. Meantime, all tied up in overtime in the Big Eight semifinals. Missouri and Oklahoma State. Let's join Jay Randolph and Gary Thompson for the final second. Norm Stewart talking to his Tigers. We're in overtime. The power and splendor of college basketball at its best here this afternoon. Overtime, they're tied at 85. Sutton's Oklahoma State Cowboys top seeded. The top seeds have won seven of the previous 14 tournaments. Coming up, it is Nebraska and Kansas. had the final shot. Doug Smith bounced it off the iron. In the overtime, the final shot. They still can't get it done. We'll go to double OT. We'll keep you updated and get back to the ABC in a moment. Welcome back to Charlotte, North Carolina. ACC semifinals. North Carolina by two over Virginia. Hubert Davis for three. In their last possession, Cliff Rogier made a sensational move to the basket. Just floated through the air. There's the ball coming out deep. Here goes.
goes Crotty after the loose ball. Look at him hustle, hustle, scrap and claw. And deflects it and into the sideline it comes. Jeff Jones, I mean, you talk about young. Look at this guy on that sideline. Georgetown over Providence, second half. Look at Tennessee, up seven on Georgia. What a story that is. It's been some strange games so far this week, haven't they? Wow. Rice low to Lynch, triple team, loose ball. Smith couldn't save it. I'll tell you one thing, I'm happy for Wade Houston and his son Allen. Allen's such a great player as we look at John Crotty, and a lot of people aren't aware of it. Rick Pitino certainly could break down his game better than I can, but any time I've ever watched him play, he has really impressed me, Mike. Battle Lynch, North Carolina leads by two. A little split move off the post. Chill cut. They enter that ball into the post, and they run a little split cut off and all of the old Boston Celtics on Red R back system. Doesn't look at London, look at those wide shoulders. Football player. They got another great football player on that sideline, Terry Kirby. Terry Kirby, who did not play yesterday. His playing time has been reduced a lot. I remember that uh, Terry Holland said if he had concentrated on basketball, he would have been a great player. Well, he's another one of those special athletes that is able to play both. Rushed for over a thousand yards last year. Chilcutt hits the free throw. Came out First of high time school. that uh, Carolina's had a chance to go to the line today. Came out of high school. Kirby was number one rated in USA Today. And chose Virginia because they said they could let him play both sports, and that's what he wanted. When you're that good, you do anything you want. <laughs> Here goes the trap. See, this is where I think Carolina has problems. I really think they hurt themselves when they go to their defensive traps and scramble because of the lack of foot speed and quickness. Doug Smith, number 11, is in to run the club. Kenny Turner misses the shot. Here comes King Rice on the run. Hubert Davis. See a lot of teams Fox. running a three-point line. Great pass from Fox, and Lynch gets the layup. Mike, that's part of their secondary phase of their transition game. The reversal, the dump down to the boxes. Doug Smith, the heir apparent to Crotty at the point guard, had to pick up his dribble and nearly turned it over. Here's a foul on Rick Fox. Crotty's been playing so many minutes that Smith doesn't get really a chance to play. Good little ball handler. Look at Dean shaking his head. Karate will come back in now along with Jeffries. When you think about Dean sitting on that sideline all those years with all those W's, it's amazing how he's gone through era after era. Well, he has instituted a system from the time he got there and refined it and refined it over time. Incredible. Well, he's kept up with all the changes in the game. He's adjusted. Look at this push outside. Fox could have been going for a foul there. Karate nearly forced over the midcourt line. North Carolina scrambling on defense right now. Stiff trying to get on track. Montross, great clear out underneath. I think Montross is rebounding a lot better than he did earlier this year. Stiff is only at one out of six shots. That is the Cavaliers' problem. They don't shoot very well, and Stiff is one of the guys that has to shoot well. Well, yes, that one away. Yesterday was three for 11 before he caught on fire late. Jeffrey's got a hand on it, blunt with a steal ahead to Crotty. Carolina back on defense very, very quickly. Oliver with a miss. They're only getting one crack at it. They use their big guy up on top, then he slides inside. But I trust him as a passer. Now he's going to post down in the box. Lynch against Blunden trying to get him up in the air. Missed his shot. Offensive rebound. Followed by Davis. Won't go. Another follow, and Montross will be called for the foul his second. Yeah, he has to really work a little bit more on a jump rope, get a little bit more agility, a little more quickness to the basket. Jeffries has got that big, wide body. We've got a timeout on the court. 7.15 to go first half. North Carolina extends its lead to 6, 25-19. We showed you the end of regulation, the end of the first overtime. Now they're in double OT, Oklahoma State and Missouri for the right to go to the championship game in the Big 8. Let's join Jay Randolph and Gary Thompson. The number one seed, Oklahoma State Cowboys, down by three. We're in the second overtime, Byron Houston. Their co-player of the year banking it off the glass. Missouri leading 90-89, second overtime, 218 remaining. Along with Jack Hartman and Gary Thompson, Jay Randolph, 
standing room only, Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Jay, the only chance Peter has against Houston down low is that with his speed, he can keep him from getting the ball. Once he gets it right there, it's going to be a mismatch. You go right up over the top. Missouri will really have to duck down and help him. Just joining us, the second overtime of this first semifinal game. Peeler comes out of there. What a job by Peeler. They were trying to get it into Chris Heller. Now Peeler takes the jumper. He's got it. And Missouri leads 92-89 with a minute and 38 to play. 19 points for Anthony Peeler. Homegrown right here in Kansas City out of Paseo High School. Sean Sutton. Number one seed, the Cowboys from Stillwater. Battling back from 16 points down in the second half to tie it. And we were tied at 85 after the first overtime. Booker's got to be careful. Both those two guys can shoot the three-point shot. Three-pointer by Potter. We're 92 all. Jay had 18 points in the victory yesterday over Kansas State, Gary. Now does Missouri... Well, they're not going to do it. I was going to say they have a chance to get a quick shot if they push it down and have a two-to-one advantage. Right now, uh, Oklahoma State's going to get the ball back as Norm Stewart takes a timeout. Norm Stewart calling a timeout. 53.6 seconds remaining in this second overtime. 92 all. The 87th meeting between these two rivals. And coming up, of course, next, in the second semifinal, it will be the Cornhuskers of Nebraska under Coach of the Year in the Big 8, Danny Knee, and the Kansas Jayhawks of Roy Williams. Great parody in the Big 8 this year, strength top to bottom, and what a game here in the semifinal. Just uh, a tremendous basketball game, and uh, this is just going to go down to who has the ball the last time. Uh, it's unbelievable the way this game has gone. Opportunities have been there for both teams to win it. Missouri's missed a, a number of free throws that could have helped them. Oklahoma State had the midcourt violation. The team foul situation. Timeouts left. Missouri with three. Oklahoma State with one. And the possession arrow going to Oklahoma State University. These two teams in double overtime. We're tied at 92 all. Byron Houston. Doug Smith leading their teams, but some great play. Corey Williams doing a great job for the Cowboys off the bench. And Heller and Coleman, Booker and Reggie Smith. Here is Doug Smith. Won't go. Rebound Potter. Well, they got the ball where they wanted, Gary, and then couldn't get the job done. Yep, big miss. 40 seconds remaining. 92 all, second overtime. A disparity on the shot clock of what, about three seconds? Shot clock at 23, 26 on the game clock. Missouri still with three timeouts. Oklahoma State with one. Thing you gotta be careful here right now is do not shoot the ball too quick. Sutton. Houston put it up. Rebound Doug Smith. Foul. Foul on Hatcher. With 2.8 seconds, Doug Smith, the All-American from Detroit, Michigan. The senior, the only senior on the Tiger squad. Will go to the line. His number retired last Monday night. Here it is, Gary. And the shot clock was running down on Houston. He takes it off balance. Smith goes up, and now Hatcher on the reach and grab. He's got to be sick of feeling for himself right now because as you look at it a second time, you know that the clock and time is running out. Eddie Sutton's reaction. Oh, boy. Here's another yeah. thing to think about on a free throw right now. The kids are so used to going in fast in the lane. If you're Missouri, you want to make sure you don't break the plane before it releases from the shooter's hand. Well, 92 all. Doug Smith will be at the stripe, and Gary Smith at 6'10", nearly an 82% free throw shooter.
all tied up at 92 apiece. We hate to see a situation like this arise, and you don't want to criticize the official. It looked like there was a miss pushed by Doug Smith in the back first. No harm, no foul. You've got to let that one go. It's, it is unfortunate that you lose a game, especially in double overtime, on a call like that. It's human error. Yes. Now, earlier, before that, you were talking about the three-point shot, not allowing a team to come back and tie you and force these overtimes with the threes. Well, we all know the three-point shot is a great weapon, but you have to defend it as much as take it. And twice in that game, uh, Missouri had a three-point lead, and Oak State came, ba came back and hit a three-pointer. All right, let's go back to the Big 8 semifinals in Kansas City. Find out if they can put this one away from the free-throw stripe. Meanwhile, our game's a 10-point contest. We'll be back. Back to back, only Lonnie Kruger, Mike Evans, Wayman Tisdale, and Danny Manning have done it in the Big 8 Conference, and he's with some great company. Doug Smith, who came back to play his senior year, and many people thought he would go to the NBA. Well, he will be stepping to the line. This is the second overtime. 2.8 seconds remaining, 92 all, Missouri, Oklahoma State. Smith started the day with 2,124 points in his illustrious career. Yeah. Big free throw. There is Javon Kruda. As timeout is called, Kruda, who had the injury, a splendid freshman who's had the disappointment of just having to sit on the bench. And uh, Kruda is going to be a big factor for this club. Let's bring Jack Hartman back in. We're at 93-92 with 2.8 seconds remaining in the second overtime. And Jack, that, that foul down there, that, you coached a long time. That's, uh, that's what can turn your hair gray. I mean, it's, it's the way the game is played. Well, it, it points to the excitement that, that we're involved in, the emotions of it. The, the young man instinctively reached out and created a foul. But going back before that, I know that Eddie is very disappointed in the shot that they got in the last shot situation. They got, they got the clock to 40 seconds, and they ran it down, and they didn't get a very good shot. You can see Binder is off balance. He didn't get squared up. They wanted him with the ball, but he didn't get squared up, and, it, and then the foul, and it was an instinctive thing. I want to ask Jack Harbin. Missouri's a one-point lead. Oklahoma State, no timeouts. Would you miss the free throw? If you make it in a two-point lead, you got a chance to throw long or get a shot, which probably is a three-point shot in Big Jim. I don't know, in 2.8 seconds, that's a lot of time on a rebound miss. Maybe you can get it in better position. What would you think? I think the miss starts the clock with, with less preparation for the Oklahoma State. Right. That if, the, if they does make the second, they're better prepared. He steps out of bounds and throws long. All right, here we go. Missouri by one, double overtime. Doug Smith. Missouri. Doug Paul time immediately. What they'll do now, I assume they'll set their defense, and I would think that they'll try and get a big guy on the basketball right here and try and not let the inbounder get a good pass off. To recap it again, in case you've just joined us, Missouri led 43-39 at half. They took a 16-point lead at 66-50 in the second half. The Cowboys came back, tied it at 78 after regulation. We're tied at 85 after the first overtime. Missouri leading 94-92 with 2.8 seconds remaining in the second overtime period. Well, the situation is still Norm Stewart and the huddle as they uh, get their strategy down. But you got the 2.8 now. You're in desperation time. As Missouri, you got to make sure that you do not foul. And you're sitting with a once-in-a-lifetime shot. Probably will end up from three-point range. Norm and Stewart get Tigers beat. cannot go to the NCAA because of sanctions. Eddie Sutton's club is going. And we should say this about Eddie Sutton. He becomes the first Division I coach ever to take four teams to the NCAA tournament. A great tribute to him. And he's had four different teams that have had uh, 20 win seasons. He's a good one. You know, these two fellas have been around a long time. Between Sutton and Stewart, they are coaching their 1,477th games this afternoon. Now into the game. Missouri and a spur bank is into the game. He's going to throw it in, and he's a he's pitcher a baseball on the baseball pitcher. team. Look for it to Houston, maybe, and he can go up and catch it in traffic. Doesn't get it. Heller has it. That is it. Norm Stewart and Eddie 
Sutton across the way, shaking hands. Byron Houston will be back next year, and Doug Smith and the Tigers will be back tomorrow. North Carolina getting a lot of breathing room here on Virginia. They're up 41-27 with only a minute 39 to go in the first half. They've and really Virginia is being destroyed on the boards, 28 to 10 in the rebounding department. Well, they're playing really exceptionally well defensively and offensively, North Carolina. A heck of a lot better than we saw yesterday against Clemson where Cliff Ellis had that game plan where the control tempo, and they came out very passive. They're not passive today. Turner with a runner, won't go. Lynch clears the boards to Rice, who's not played a lot in the first half. Phelps has gotten a lot of minutes. Yeah, Phelps has played well, so has Montross. Lynch, good first half. 43-27, yeah. Carolina. There's that reverse of the basketball out of their secondary phase of their running game. Now they rotate into a zone. I saw Kentucky. I did the game. Kentucky played North Carolina. It was right to the buzzer. What a great basketball game that was. Turner will try a three. Carolina pulled it out at home. Looked like a foul on Blunden underneath. Turner is in only one of nine shots. That's been their dilemma all year, shooting the basketball sure after they is. jumped out 17-4. Hey, Missouri wins that game, now goes to the final. As I said earlier, Mike, I flat out believe that if you're on probation, you should not be part of the tournament because right now they can create an embarrassment. They will not create an opportunity where they'll deny someone a chance because Oklahoma State, Kansas, and Nebraska still will go. But I think it's an embarrassment to have a team that's on probation win your tournament championship. Fox with a miss from a free throw line. The lead is 16. We're under a minute, first half. Stith's been trying to do it on some one-on-one -on -one moves, and right now Rick Fox, Carolina's most consistent defensive player, is on him. And now they'll switch Fox off. Now they'll rotate back in that 2-3 zone. They try to do a few things out of the 2-3. They like to trap in the corners. Stith from the baseline. Brian Stith now has 10 points in the first half. Well, a very streaky shooter. He couldn't find one early, and now all of a sudden he's really hot. He's hit his last three. Carolina playing for the last shot with 28 seconds to go. That's the game clock on your screen. They go to the spread, the four corners. Two guys wide. Ball usually in the center of the floor. Try to get some dribble penetration. Of course, Virginia can't afford to fall way behind. They are not a quick comeback type of team. Fox, nice job of handling the ball and draws the foul. Simply went into a one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Fox taking the ball to the goal. Offensive foul called on Rick Fox. Wow, a little surprise right there. King Rice gave a cheer. He can't believe it. He's talking to the official right now. He says, come on, give us a break. John Moreau says, offensive, offensive. One of the officials ready to call it on one of the Cavaliers for blocking. And now with nine seconds to go, Virginia will get a last shot. They're down 14. This could really help them. Roger on the floor. I wonder if he'll ever be late for curfew again. Two minutes <laughs> late, and he found himself a one-game suspension. Turnover. King Rice caused Blunden to throw it away. They should get a high percentage shot now with 8.7 seconds left. Hasn't been a good first half for Jeff Jones and the Cavaliers. They were 17 and four at one point this year. Finished 20 and 10 during the regular season. Played very well yesterday at beating Wake Forest. Chill cut on the inbounds. Davis lost it. Blunden has it. Not a good pass by Chilcott. Tough to handle. Crotty was trying to get something off at the buzzer, but Rice stripped the ball. It's been all North Carolina. The Tar Heels have dominated. Dick, they really have. And at the end of the first half here in Charlotte, North Carolina leading at 43 to 29. Welcome back to the ACC semifinals. Virginia, the first basket of the second half, they pull within 12. Somehow they're within 12. They shot 35% in the first half. We're out rebounded 30 to 11. Well, shooting 35%'s been their nightmare. That's been their problem in their real decline period after jumping out 17 and 4 earlier this year. Shooting the basketball. You must be able to find that hoop, baby. Game was tied at 19, and then Carolina went on an 18 to 4 run. 
They've led big ever since. Next five minutes, I really believe, are big right here for Virginia. They have to get a spurt. They got to get a streak going. An eight-one spurt, nine-two spurt. Hubert Davis was six on the shot clock. Forced it up, didn't get it. Chilcutt had to rebound, knocked away and stolen by Anthony Oliver. They want Stith to do it. Collision with Lynch, no whistle. Jeffries, 15-footer. It's not the shot they want, I don't believe. Shooting the jump shot's really their nightmare. They really have a tough time shooting the J. Chilcutt, wide open for three with a miss. Turner was forced out of there. The foul will go on Lynch. That'll be three on George Lynch. Take a look at the first half stats if we can. Virginia, again, shooting 35%. Look at the rebounds. Just hammered on the boards. And the bench scoring, Virginia only got three points, 18 for North Carolina. Well, they don't go to their bench. You got to expect North Carolina, basically. They go to their bench quite a bit. So a 6-1 advantage there on the bench. North Carolina in the zone. They're going to make them shoot that perimeter jump shot. Stiff with a miss. Well, Dean Smith didn't win 711 games by wondering what to do next. Chill cut on a terrible pass by Rice that actually hit the rim. That's scary when you look at those numbers. I didn't get that many wins in practice with intra-squad games. There's a lot of guys that don't have the patience to count to 711, let alone win them. And I think we're going to see a lot more added to that list. Oliver baseline hits the jumper, and the Cavaliers have pulled within 10. First two points of the game for Oliver. They were up 16 at one time. Virginia. And here's an offensive foul away from the ball on North Carolina. I tell you, North Carolina was getting real solid production out of their freshmen when they were on the floor. Phelps and also out of Montrose. And even Rozier came in and gave them two big baskets. Foul was on Hubert Davis, his first, the third quick team foul against Carolina here in the second half. See, right now they look a, bit, a little bit like they did against Clemson, that lethargic look. They get passive. They try to turn it on and off, and I don't think you can do that. You're going to get burnt against somebody good. Of course, the zone tends to make you a little more passive, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. You have a tendency to stand around and become a little bit more stationary. Now you got to find the gaps in this zone and look for the high percentage shot. But finding the high percentage shot is one thing, and then finalizing is something else. Oliver started to go down the lane, thought better of it. Shot clock at 14 seconds. They don't look to Jeffries enough. They got to get it into him. He can become an inside outside passer. Stith with a miss. Jeffries offensive rebound back to Brian Stith. Missed again. Tipped outside. Oliver retrieves. Giving him three attempts. He had the wide open 10 footer. Boy, and the way they've been shooting, Dick, they need three or four attempts. Turner will try. I mean, those are great shots they're getting, Mike. You can't get a better percentage shot than that. Here's the steal. Jeffries down the lane with a left hand. Good move by Jeffries. Now, in that sequence, they had five shots. They've cut the lead to eight. Well, you go one for five, but you get a conversion. Cavaliers have scored the last seven points. Here's another steal almost. Davis saved it as Oliver really hustled on defense. Chill cut. Tough shot from the baseline. Lynch kept it alive but committed the foul. And that would be four on George Lynch. He's got to be concerned with the way his team is playing right here. Very sluggish in the second half. Jeff Jones has got to like the fight in his club. There's the turnaround. Jay by Chill cut. Not a good shot falling away. And there's Lynch climbing the back with three fouls. You want to know how sloppy the first half was? Neither point guard, Crotty or Rice, had an assist. Wow. The lead is only eight. Crotty. Collision, blocking foul, no basket. Crotty loves to spot a seam in the defense and then attack it with the drive to the goal. And usually when he's driving to the basket, he's trying to close out and score, not penetrate and dish. Here he is on that drive. Defensive player rotates over just a half step too slow. John Moreau with the call. That's Foul another look. on Montross. I think if Montross stands his ground instead of ducks, he maybe draws the charge. Easy for me to say. I don't have a guy barreling into me. Yeah, Crotty really comes at you really hot and heavy. Carolina has already committed five team fouls in three minutes and 49 seconds. Well, None called on Virginia. Well, that's another factor that you're not really playing good hustling basketball. You're a little slow to the ball. Turner, offensive rebound. And all at 
once the Cavaliers have awakened and cut the lead to five. I know he might be waiting for that TV timeout, but I think they need a T.O. baby to settle down because Virginia is back in the hunt. That was only the second basket Turner has made in this game, 11 tries. They really picked it up a notch on a defensive end now, Virginia. Rice trying to make something happen. Fox outside, shot clock at 18. Good man-to-man -man defense, staying between the man and the basket. Whistle away from the ball, we got a foul inside. And it will go against Anthony Oliver, that will be his second. Oliver against Hubert Davis. Timeout on the court, 15-36 to play in this semifinal. It's North Carolina by five. North Carolina led at one point, 43 to 27. They haven't scored since. It's now 43-38. Carolina has not scored in the second half. Nine zip. Let's see if they got something to decide on this out of bounds play. The box. Rice inbounds to Montross. 15 33 to go in the game. Hubert Davis. Fox with a follow. Big clutch player, Rick Fox. Whenever they need the big basket, he's their big basket player. Fox, eight points, 11. Big rebound. Designated play for a jump shot for Hubert Davis, but Fox got the good offensive rebound lead. Davis has had the hot hand the last 10 games, shooting cut up to 60 percent. Friday used the screen to get down the lane, draws the foul. Friday went right by King Rice like Matador defense. I mean, it was like he wasn't even there. No effort whatsoever to try and check him. Take a look right here. There's Rice 21. He just goes right by him. Gets fouled on a play. Fox commits his third personal. So Lynch has four. Fox has three. And Montross has three. Fox! Roddy hits the free throw to cut it to six. Fortunately, if you're a Carolina fan, you can look down a very deep bench in case somebody gets in foul trouble. Well, yeah, they got depth on that bench, and they got some good-looking young people. Roddy missed the second, but Turner for the second time in a row. The miss. That's just pure hustle, Mike. That's just getting out hustled and out scrapped. And the Cavalier fans love it. They're going bananas. They've cut it to four. Rice can't get by Crotty. Davis. Carolina looks a little shaken right now, a little unsure. Not getting good spacing offensively either, so you can give a lot of help. Now they go to a spread. Clear out for seven. Rice. Shot clock at 10. Rice forces it up and missed. Chilcutt with a follow. Good inside position by Peter Chilcutt out of a 3-2 set. He's just dominating Blunden inside. 47 to 41. Chilcutt's such a solid player. He's been that way throughout his career. Very unspectacular kind of player. Here's another foul. Kenny Turner put it up. Foul on Montross. That is four on the seven-foot freshman. See, that's the biggest adjustment young people have to make coming in. There's the little drive by King Rice. Now Chilcutt's got inside position. Kisses it on the glass. Turner at the line, the 6'6 senior out of Indianapolis. That's the seventh team foul already on North Carolina. Highly unusual for them. 14 minutes, 10 seconds to go. Cavaliers have committed only one. We're going to see Rogier come out of floor from Bradenton, Florida, replacing Eric Montross. Rogier was such a dynamic scorer on the high school level as we look at Montrose, the seven-footer, going out with four fouls. Rated by many the number one big player in America last year on the scholastic level. Talking about high school, Virginia, we said yesterday, Jeff Jones, great recruiting class with Junior Burrow and some outstanding people like Yuri Barnes, Jason Williford, and I really believe they're getting a verbal commitment any day now from Corey Alexander, one of the top three point guards in America. I'm sure Ricky Patino is well aware of Corey. Hubert Davis with a great cut, got the feed and put it in. And a technical foul has been called on the North Carolina bench. And here comes Dean Smith. And he's being told in no uncertain terms to go sit down. Donnie Gray telling him to get back in that coach's box. Hubert Davis made a slashing shuffle cut to the goal and nobody stepped out to give any kind of help to take that cut away from him. 
what he said, but whatever it was, Donnie Gray didn't like it. There's that shuffle cut right down the lane. No one rotates over. He runs Oliver right into a screen. You've got to be able to jump to the ball and be on a ball side once that ball is entered to the wing. Stith, an 80% shooter, will shoot the technicals. Brian Stith, great career. He doesn't look at Hubert Davis. He's been a star, as you said, Mike, in the last 10 games. Uncle Walter would be smiling. Uncle Walter, if he had a chance to watch it, he's probably playing somewhere as we look at Dean Smith. Walter Davis now with the Portland Trailblazers. His uncle was one of the great shooters in the history of North Carolina basketball. 14 points for Stith. The lead is 5. 13-51 to go. There's that 2-3 zone. Roll a little active up on top. King Rice trying to match up on a basketball. Should be able to get some wing jump shots right there. There's the wing jump shot. Oliver buried it. He was on the line. It's a two-pointer. See, he's got to be aware of where that line is. Sure You're does. Gonna have to step behind. You get yourself free. What a pass by Fox to Chilcutt. Are what you a, kidding? What a great two-man play. Rick Fox with that little drop-down bounce pass to the inside hand. Four assists for Rick Fox. 51-46. On his little backdoor cut. Roddy! Backdoor move off the entry to the post. Instead of going to the goal, he peels off and shoots the jumper. Virginia playing so much better than it did in the first half. 51-48. Well, one of the reasons they're shooting a lot better. Rozier, great move to the lane. Missed the shot, missed the tip. Jeffries knocked to the floor by Rozier. That was an unbelievable move by Rozier, too. Really a great move. Stiff way outside. Now they'll settle it down. Rotated out of the zone there in the man-to-man -man defense. I'd go at Rozier right now because if he has a liability, it's on a defensive end. They should go to Jeffries. Back door to Crotty, stolen by Rodel, and then the foul by Oliver, his third. See, I would attack the young guy right now who's had a history of getting in foul trouble, Rozier, just like Montross, trying to make that adjustment to play defense. George Lynch, who has four personal fouls, comes back in. Chilcutt will get a breather. And Oliver will sit down with his third. See, watch Fox right now. Drop the bounce pass, and Chilcutt seals off the defensive player. He really gets great inside position by bringing the ball to the weak side. What exceptional look by Rick Fox. Carolina with the ball on a three-point lead. Phelps in at the point guard for Rice. See, Lynch is going to slide down inside. He's not a threat from out here. Fox trying to post on a box. Swiped at the baseline by Kenny Turner. Lynch doesn't have good perimeter skills. He's got to really work in that area. Parker off balance and in a hurry. Missed it badly. Helps who played well in that first half on the floor and out for point. Rozier trying to step by Blunden. Got it to Lynch. Blunden with a rebound. Here comes Crotty. They're down by three. London is the perfect guy complimentary player. Set screens, rebound, play on the defensive end, body up on people. Stiff over Rodel. Won't go Fox with another rebound. Fox really rebounded today. What a Windex man. That's number 12. <laughs> Missed at the other end. Rozier offensive rebound. Don't count it. Let's see if it's on Rozier. It is. No basket. And it will be a one and one, I believe. We'll find out when we come back. 11-21 to go in the game. 51-48, North Carolina. Fifty-one forty-eight. the Tar Heels over the Cavaliers in a game that has suddenly gotten much closer than it had been earlier as the Cavaliers made a fine comeback. That's how they've shot in the second half after shooting 35% in the first half. Now it's North Carolina having trouble shooting the ball. What a great story, Tennessee and also Louisville. I mean, just an amazing story. That's the beauty of having postseason tournaments. I'd like to see them all over. I'd like to see the Ivy League have it, the Big Ten have it, and the Pac-10 because I think you give that team. Everybody says let everybody in the tournament. Well, in essence, you do let everybody in the tournament by having a postseason. A little mini series. Look, Dean jumping out of the coach's box again. Donnie Grayson, come on, Dean, now you got to sit down now. See, Donnie says a few years ago, coach, I was ready to ask you for your autograph. 
the controversy here is whether Blunden should shoot the free throw instead of Brian Stibbs, and I think it should have been Blunden. I think Dean Smith has a very valid point here. Of course, from Virginia's standpoint, they would rather have Stith at the line than Blunden. Been a conversation that on between John Moreau and Donnie Gray. Going to get George Lynch back in the game. Let's take a look at the last play, see who committed the foul or who was fouled. There's the rebound. And it was Blunden who was involved and not Stith. So Virginia's gotten away with one here, putting Brian Stith on the line. It certainly looks that way right here. It looks like Dean's right out of money, and that's a correctable error. If the officials had recognized it and agreed. They've cut the lead to one. And Dean Smith still voicing his protests over there, and he's absolutely right. Virginia outscoring North Carolina 21-8 in this half. Virginia really outplaying him in this second period. Rodel, oh, Reese, Phelps, Lynch, and Rozier on the court. Reese. Brian Reese with a nice slashing move. He's got great jumping ability. Tremendous vertical jump from out of New York City to Big Apple. The foul was called on Stith, There's but they're overruled the basket. Oh, they call it no go. There's the look to Reese cutting to the ball. Oh. They got the push before Mike Pryor for the release of the shot. Break for the Cavaliers there. Chill cut back in the game. Turnaround jumper won't go. See, Derek Phelps has got to learn how to get angles on making his pass. Didn't have a good angle on the entry right there to chill cut. Virginia with a chance to take the lead. Stiff almost lost it. Jeffries to Stiff and they'll reset. When you're rebounding on the offensive end like that, that's pure hustle. That was Parker, not Jeffries. Excuse me. Turner. Last time Virginia led, it was 5-4. Virginia likes to lay those screens and then come back to the basketball. Phelps got a hand on it. Rodel picked it up. So the chance to take the lead goes by the board. Rozier fouled from behind. Reach in by Kenny Turner. That'll be his second. Cliff has to really protect the ball a little bit more. He has a tendency to bring the ball down low. When he does that, he negates his great size. He goes from 6'10 to about 5'10. Hubert Davis comes back in, and Rodel will go out. This is Oliver checking back for the Cavaliers. Oliver, good shooter, even though struggling the second part of the year, trying to bounce back from that broken bone in his hand, his right hand, his shooting hand. Team lost it. Exactly what you said. Yeah, see, Mike, he has a tendency to bring the ball to the floor. When he does that, he really allows the little guys to get in to trap him, to deflect the ball. Dean Smith's seen enough of that, and he's got Rick Fox up and ready to come back in. With 9.55 to play, Crotty for three. Chill cut, big rebound. Virginia just can't get it over the hump here. Reese to Rozier. Nice transition game. Running up the sideline and sliding Rozier to the box. They like to run the ball up the sideline and look to dump it down inside. Carolina has the lead back to three. Sideline break. Some people like to run the middle break. Oliver trapped at the baseline. Back to Karate. Right now, the zone's going to leave some gaps on that wing. Skip Turner passes. trying to square up against Joka. Shot clock at 20. And there it is. Stolen. Oliver. Got it. The wings are wide open, Mike. All you have to do is swing the ball with a skip pass, and you got wide open jumpers against that 2 3. Well, you have to find somebody who's willing to shoot it and who can make it, too. Roddy's first assist. The only reason is because guys aren't putting the ball down. He's made some excellent passes. On the collision, Rozier misses the shot, but Stiff will pick up the foul. That's three on Stiff. And that's the 15th foul against the Cavaliers. Cornell Parker will come back in for Virginia. Wake for, uh, Rick Fox is on the court for Carolina. Cornell's going to be an excellent player. He's a freshman getting adjusted to the college scene. He's got great size, can play small forward, big guard. He's got to improve his offensive skills a little bit, but he's a good, tough defensive player. Good Stith rebound. is out for a breather, and Rozier hits the free throw. 54% on the season. 
from the free throw line for Clifford Rozier. See, Clifford's never got into a real rhythm to his game because of coming in, out, and because of the presence of so many seniors ahead of him. But next year, when he knows he gets playing time, he will be a star. Those were the first two Carolina free throws of this half. Montross back in for Rozier. Montross already with four personal fouls. The lead is three, 55-52, as we approach nine minutes. Well, the big question, will Virginia spoil the party in a big matchup, Duke and North Carolina, where Duke tries to go for three straight over to Tar Heels this year? Hubert Davis all over Turner forced him to miss, or all over Oliver forced him to miss the shot. I think a lot of people at halftime talking to a lot of the media guys, they thought this baby was locked up, sealed, and tucked away. Not yet. Somebody forgot to tell Virginia. Fox, after a good screen, she'll cut with a follow. He missed it. off the hands of Hubert Davis, but last touched by Oliver, I believe. She'll cut plays so hard. Like you said earlier, Mike, nothing spectacular but steady. There's the jump by Fox. Jump shot. Here comes Chilcut, number 32. And the ball's deflected off Oliver's hands. Chilcut, 10 points, 8 rebounds. Davis headed blocked from behind, and Kenny Turner with the ball to Karate. Three on three. There's a block by Chilcut. Rice save. Nice save right there. Davis. Got a trailer. Got a trailer. Chilcut, Chilcut with the rebound. It'll be waved off, and Turner will be called for the foul. That will be three on Turner. Chilcutt did such a great job. He blocked the shot. Watch this now. Here comes Chilcutt. He blocks the shot, and then he fills the lane. He's the first guy down the floor for the offensive rebound. Here he is on the other end now. Watch this. Davis is going to shoot the little jumper. And look at Chilcutt working to get inside position. Oh, what a great job. Ricky Patino's got to love that. Ricky, do you love it? Turner had to find a way to block him out of there. Stiff put him back out on the court. Of course, it was a real break because they overruled the basket. Right, took the goal away. Somebody's probably wondering, what's this here? Ricky Patino, Kentucky's not here. He's in our studio. Doing an excellent job with John Sotman. Rice guarded by Karate. We approach eight minutes of three-point game. Karate on top of Rice. This is Fox against Stiff, and he dribbled about this foot out of bounds. Just really telegraphed the offensive sets. North Carolina has turned it over for the 14th time in the game. We have a timeout, 7.58 left. Carolina by three. North Carolina leads it by three with 7.58 to go. The story in the second half, Virginia out-rebounded in the first half, 30-11, to out-rebounding North Carolina in the second half. 20 to 11 and North Carolina shooting only 28 percent there are the rebound numbers Cavaliers also shooting much better for years North Carolina always over the 50 percent mark field goal percentage Karate wants a different play and backs it out Fox and Stitt, two ACC All-Stars playing head-to-head. -head. Fox trying to deny him the ball. Stitt's trying to point to the 45-degree angle to get the entry. There he is. Stiff double team got the shot off. Turner kept it alive, but Montross has the rebound. Trying to get some motion on the offensive end here on a 1-4 set. Pass and go away. We're on a back screen for Fox. Montross. See, Montross laid the screen. The guy that lays the screen is the most dangerous guy on the floor as he peeled right back to the ball. I'll tell you, he's impressive right now. A lot Certainly better is. than he looked earlier this year. 7.6 rebounds. The lead has grown to five. Every time Virginia gets close, they can't get the big hoop. But there's a three by Crotty to cut it to two. That was a big one. Crotty stepped right into the gap of the 2-3 zone. And there's the youthful Jeff Jones. Look at the smile on his face. This is a lot of fun. Virginia's tried 10 three-pointers. That's only the second one they've made today. And John Crotty is the leading scorer for this club with 18 points. Had 23 yesterday. Trying to do it defensively. Rice, who has not done anything offensively today, gets his first two. Well, good-looking move right there. A little change of direction, front change. Shot the little jumper off the dribble. Think you really surprised, Crotty. Had not tried the shot. Crotty, after a screen, didn't want it. 
In the lane, back to Jeffries. Now Oliver. He'll try a runner. Turner, offensive rebound, tries to lean in, off balance, and banked it in. That was a tough play by Turner. Put the ball to the deck, banked that baby off the glass. He tried every move he had, Dick. Yeah, every one. He had more moves than John Travolta on a disco floor. He's hit his last three. We have a two-point game again, 5.52 to go. They try to get a little two-man play, slide someone to the box, pick up his dribble. Get a five-second violation there. Fox, turnaround jumper, air ball, and chill cut right there. Chill cut, always around the basketball, really anticipates exceptionally well. It's always into the game, is focused, is concentrating. What well, concentration is right. He followed that ball. He knew it was short of the rim before anybody else did. Four-point lead. Zone defense, gaps, gaps, get the gaps, get the seams. Drive it right in, make two people play it, and get the wing jump shutter to dump down to the box. He drive it right at the front. Roddy is set on the wing right now. Got it to Turner around Montrose. That one won't go. Long rebound to Rice. And then Rice dribble it off his foot out of bounds under pressure from Oliver. Lost control with the left-handed dribble. Rice going to come out with the ball. Now watch the left-hand dribble. There's a little deflection right off his knee. Donnie Gray says, no, we're going the other way, King. 61-57, 5-0-3 and counting. The winner plays Duke tomorrow. Stith for three. Georgetown. Georgetown with a big win today. Missouri beating Oklahoma Turner. State. Turner with the deuce. Georgetown's in the big dance, Mike. I wouldn't want to play them in the first round. They held their team yesterday to 27%. No, they shot 27% and won the game. But Tumble had 27 rebounds. Lynch coming back into the ball game. Of course, if you shoot 27%, there may be 27 rebounds to get, aren't well, I mean, there? That's amazing. Shoot 27% and win. They beat Connecticut. Come back today, beat Providence. They're in. Question mark. Will Providence be in? 449 left in this one. Virginia's clawed its way back in it. Spreading in a 1-4 set, interchanging down on the boxes. Rice that time way off. Stiff with the ball. Virginia trying to run. They could tie. Turner. Stith with the follow. Stith offensive rebound. Basket counts and the foul. What a big time offensive rebound by one of the great players in the ACC. Brian Stith working the glass. He's a man possessed. He said, baby, this is my rock. I'm going to the glass and I'm going to eat it up. And these guys say, uh uh, we could be in trouble. Now here comes the jumper. Now watch Brian Stith, number 20. I mean, does he go up and get this baby? Here he is taking it up. He says, come on, all of you try to check me. Nobody can. And King Rice fouled him on the play. Virginia with a chance to take the lead for the first time since it was 5-4. Not yet. They just can't clear that final hurdle. I would go right now, two options. One chill cut, two fox. Fox already with 14 rebounds in this game. Oliver really trying to deny the ball, keep it away from Hubert Davis. And that would be my first option. This is my second. Fox with eight points on the game, hits the three. Chill cut to Fox, and the bench stands up with Carolina tradition. Every time Virginia has challenged, Carolina has had the correct response. Four minutes to play. Carolina stayed in that zone, playing that 2 3 matchup. Stith had the shot and passed it. Karate will reset, 29 on the shot clock. Scouting book on Virginia can't shoot the perimeter shots, so they've seen a lot of zones. Karate for three. Wouldn't go, and Fox. Rips another rebound and a 15 rebounds for Rick Fox. Well, the one thing out of the 2 3, you got a triangle, you got good rebound and position. The negative is you don't have good block out assignments. See, right now, I'd go to Fox. I'd go to Fox. He wants the ball. I'd dump it to Rick. He'd be my option in his possession. Stith is playing him. Lynch. Good catch of a hard pass, and he got by Turner. That's what Lynch does well. Slash to the ball, catch the ball, use his great legs. When he adds another dimension to his game, he's only in his second year. Shoots a perimeter. for three. Another offensive rebound to Kenny Turner. Well, they're just standing around on a defensive end, not going to the boards, allowing them a lot of opportunities with offensive boards. Kenny Turner has 13 in this half. 
as Virginia has made the comeback. They're still down by three. Davis to the baseline, double team, buried it anyway. That was a tough shot. Hubert Davis, though, shot it with confidence. Jeff Jones says, I don't like that shot, baby. Jeff Jones wants a timeout. He wants to talk to Crotty and the rest of his kids. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go. The Tar Heels, 68, the Cavaliers, 63. We'll have the rest of our game, but right now, let's check in with John Saunders. All right, Mike Patrick, and we'll get it back to you momentarily, but let's update the Southeastern Conference. Cinderella has made it all the way to the ball. Tennessee against Georgia in this one. Tennessee had to win a play-in game just to face the top seed. They won that one, and now they complete it against Georgia. The final seconds run off the clock, and Tennessee advances. They beat Mississippi by nine to face Mississippi State, beat them by 17, and now beat Georgia by 20. 85 to 65, Rick Patino. that's your conference we're talking about here. How do you explain? It's one thing that they're getting to the championship game, but they're crushing teams. 20 losses, and now they're going to one game away from the NCAA. It's great to see Wade Houston, an outstanding coach, has had a, a tough season. It's great to see Allen come on. They're going to discuss after this season whether Allen goes hardship. Word was just in, he's not going. <laughs> that's right. I think when Dad's in control of the team, too, you're not going anywhere. Stay with us. We'll get back to the ACC right now. Let's rejoin Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale. John, thanks very much. And we have 2.30 left. North Carolina by five over the Cavaliers. Virginia's problem, Dick, is what the problem has been for them all year long. When they need the big basket, you know it's in their back of their mind that, uh, you know, how are we going to get one? Well, shooting the ball has been the big problem, but I would go to Brian Stith. Stith is a guy that likes to convert late in the game. He's capable of making the big play. They were really on a ropes against Notre Dame earlier this year, and he made every big play imaginable down the last four minutes. Notre Dame wasn't wearing those ugly uniforms, really. <laughs> Jeff Jones happy with Stith, wants him in there penetrating as much as possible. A look at Dean, a look at Jeff. Dean, the veteran, the experienced guy. Jeff Jones in his first year as a coach. Jeff only trails him by 690 wins. <laughs> That's all. Jeff has 21, Dean has 711. And Catch pretty, him in no time. You're pretty good at math. <laughs> I write these things down in advance. I'll make this statement, and you put this down and guarantee it. I love Jeff Jones, but he will never, ever catch Dean Smith and wins. How's that? Probably. <laughs> probably a good bet, Dick. You really go out on a good, limb, huh? That's really going on a limb, isn't it? Oh, Big possession here. Virginia down by five. Fox created the turnover. Last touch by Oliver. Rick Fox has had a brilliant game. 11 points, 15 rebounds, six assists. Jeff Jones. Not, a, not happy with this play. There's the deflection off Oliver's hands. Jeff has done a solid job in his rookie year, showing again that you've got some people right within your own situation who could do the job because they were looking all over. Rick Barnes was their first guy that they really wanted. Peter Gillen, Xavier. Carolina trying to work time off the clock. Virginia would need two possessions. Down by five. You notice who Dean plays now late in the game. All the experienced people. He says starting doesn't matter, but these are all his starters. Yeah, but hey, you don't see the blue team and all that other <laughs> jazz on the floor now. There's a foul on Blunden with 16 seconds on the shot clock. That'll be three on the senior. London's given some good minutes to this program, and when you think that this guy plays football and rotates into a basketball arena, that is special. Montross is on for Lynch. He's going for some size now. Chill cuts, 76% free throw shooter. All of Carolina players, good free throw shooters. Two for two today. There's a big one there. It makes it six points. He's made a lot of big plays. Chill cut and Fox are really the heart and guts of this basketball sure team. Sure are. And Chill cuts had a nice day. 13 points, 11 rebounds. They have dominated the boards. This would make it a three possession opportunity. Missed the second one. Turner to Karate. Shooting the three is a big problem for Virginia. Oliver certainly a threat out there on the three-point line. Goes inside to the baseline. Drawing drive jumper misses. Fox tries to save it. Knocked out of bounds off of Blunden. North Carolina is going to have to play much, much better to beat Duke the way Duke is playing right now. 
Duke is really playing at another level. I really believe that compared to what I've witnessed in all the other games as Carolina's up by six. And Duke has that uh, element of quickness I don't think Carolina has. Well, they got those versatile athletes. We talked to two hills. They had guys like Brian Davis and certainly Lakeland. Rebound of North Carolina really crashed them out of glass. 51 to 29. Fox did a nice job against the press, bringing it up. Now Rice, Brody. That's really being a Windex guy sweeping the glass. You know, Mike, coming down tomorrow, it could be for a number one seed, North Carolina versus Duke. And, you know, you look right what's happening throughout all these tournaments. It's just a, a madness. I mean, unbelievable what's happened out in the Big East. Question now, a lot of the media people back there at halftime didn't think the Big East would get eight teams. I still say there's a great chance that they can get eight teams out of the Big East. And as I said earlier, Mike, I really would like to see a rule, whatever it may be, I'd suggest a rule 50% maximum to any league because really I think it's ludicrous to play all year and have eight out of nine teams for one league and deny chances to the Siennas, the Fordhams, the Northern Illinois who go out and win 25, 24 basketball games. And I don't want to hear the cry that they don't play people. Nobody gives those teams a chance to play them when they're a quality team. Well, playing all year and having everybody gets in smacks a little bit too much of the NHL for me, doesn't it, you? <laughs> the NHL, what league is that? That's, 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 that's where the puck's in the skates. Oh, the puck's in skates. I can't keep up with the puck. You think of one eye I can follow that? Uh, here's King Rice delivering the big three. Look at the inside rebound in position. Fox was ready there for an offensive rebound. And there's Phil Ford. Phil Ford saying, look at Dean. Phil says, that's what I used to do. That's how I played when I handled it there. Virginia had been way down, came back to tie this game at 61 with 4.20 to go. But Rick Fox hit a big three-pointer. The Tar Heels have been up ever since, up seven right now. Fox fouled by Stith. No, jump ball. Possession arrow will give the ball to Carolina. They'll have to try it again. Excellent defense by Stith. Jeff Jones gets really some quality big-time new players next year. The expectations are a little higher. With those great recruits he's bringing in. He has probably, along with Kansas and Connecticut, the three best recruiting classes in America. Michigan is closing in. Lynch threw that pass and hit the sideline with it. So it's out of bounds to the Cavaliers. Montross will come back in for defense. Yeah, that's not a heady play right there. No. Virginia still needing three possessions, down by seven. Tim Higgins was still checking with the official score and blew his whistle, so he can't start yet. John Moreau right there on the game, trying to find out, be the traffic cop out there with the three guys. Going back over the scores table to check again. Hey, we got a little delay here. I want to say it's been great again, partner. Enjoyed it. Another good year with you. Had my a lot pleasure, of fun. Dick. Had a lot of fun with you. I got to go to Iowa City. They could help me get there tonight. Good luck, pal. That's beautiful arena, though. Iowa and Ohio State. I'll be rooting for you. Three pointer by Turner. That thing was a bomb. Blunden with a rebound of Crotty. That's the problem. Shooting the three. Crotty back behind the line. Got it. Virginia can't call timeout. 72 68. Rice double team. Knocked the ball away, but Crotty committed the foul. North Carolina really struggling with each possession. Not something you see with Dean Smith's basketball teams over the years. 
Friday's had himself a heck of a career. Hasn't he? He's really been solid. North Carolina Duke, that should be some kind of matchup, but Duke's got those outstanding, versatile players. I love Grant Hill, the way he's developing. Thomas Hill's becoming a star. Bob Hurley has stepped his game up, and Christian Leitner, to me, is the MVP of the ACC. Duke had some streaks today where they played absolute flawless basketball. Oh, played brilliantly. Look at Dean. No foul. No foul. How many times has he screamed out in his life? King Wright, six points. The sartorial splendor of Dean Smith on that sideline. Six-point lead. King Rice has made a couple of clutch baskets and clutch free throws. He hadn't scored in the first 37 minutes. Now he's at seven points. Stith hits the three. 74-71. They need to steal. They can't get it. They foul. They stop the clock. Stith now all of a sudden he and Body knocked down two threes. He's just still approaching like the first game. The enthusiasm the same. In practice, he really runs almost every drill. And there's Jeff Jones, the young mentor, the youngest in the nation in the Division I big-time program. It is a three-point game. Rice can salt it away or give the Cavaliers an opportunity. They have this life. This is a one and one. You bet they do. He has, they have life. They hit two threes in a row. Missed the free throw. They got throw. a chance. They can't call time. They got a chance. You want to put perimeter pressure. Rice Great defensive it away play. From Great defensive play. There it is. It's Seal over. it. Sign it. Tuck it away. Finals. Duke and North Carolina. King Rice made a big, big play. Crotty was coming up the sideline. Virginia needed the three to tie and never got the opportunity. Great defensive play by King Rice. He also made several good offensive plays. Here's a guy that's been maligned throughout his career. But according to Dean Smith, he's done everything I've asked him to do. He's really been a leader for us. Well, for Dick Vitale and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick saying thanks for watching the final. North Carolina 76, Virginia 71. The final will be Duke and North Carolina tomorrow. Let's go to John Saunders. John. All right, thanks a lot, Mike and Dick. North Carolina surviving the scare. They had the big lead at halftime. Virginia came rolling back, but they win it 76 to 71 as the final. So let's take a look at that final matchup. It will be Duke against North Carolina. The Tar Heels looking for their 12th title, 12th ACC tournament title in against Duke. And that will come your way tomorrow. Rick Patino, when you look at this, Dean Smith gets a lot of credit about what a great coach he is, how many years he's been around. And when you watch and break down what his team does, you can clearly see why. No question about it. You know how they say it's so difficult to beat a team three times. That's only true when the prior two games were nail by It's close games. And I think this is the case. I think it will be a, a great basketball game number, for the number one seed. Dean Smith was working with the back screens a lot, and it was working very well and very effective against Duke. Well, the screener is always more often open than the person he's screening for. And the back screen is the most difficult screen in basketball to defend. As you see here, the back screen is set up forcing right at this point the defensive player to help out on the person he screened for thus opening Montrose for the duck in back to the basket the back screen is so difficult to, to defend it really